Hi, my name is Owen. I'm one of the videographers and editors here at the Super Trading Gym. And if you've seen me in this gym, I don't know how to deadlift at all. So I have a couple of professionals here to help me out. Can you guys introduce yourselves real quick? I am Brianna Terry. I compete at 165. I have three all-time world records in the deadlift. Uh, my most recent one being 589. And I am number three all-time at 165. Awesome. <laughs> and I'm Hunter Henderson. I'm the number two ranked powerlifter in the world. I don't have any world records in the deadlift, but I do have a couple in the squat. Um, yeah. And we're going to teach this guy how to deadlift today. Let's do it. Yeah. Hey, stop being a little bitch. Stop posting negative comments about these girls. They both openly talk about their PED usage and they're well aware of the consequences of taking those PEDs. So cut it out and just listen to the great information that they have because they are both all time world record holders. Catch you guys later. So. Uh, I guess, yeah, deadlift is my bread and butter. Yeah. So, so one of the most important things, and don't copy me because I'm wearing bad shoes for deadlifting, uh, but one of the biggest things that's important with the sumo deadlift is your squat stance. So a lot of people try to go too wide in order to shorter in order to shorten your range of motion. And while that's all good and well, because that is a very big uh, thing within powerlifting is uh, shortened ROM, you want to make sure that all of your uh, joints are stacked. So if I were to deadlift here, my range of motion is very, very small, but if this gets to a max weight, I'm going to most likely fall over and lose balance. So what you want to do is make sure that the knee is directly stacked over the shin and the ankle bone in order to get the most advantageous and the most efficient stance for you. Um, and this stance is going to look a lot different to everyone. It might be different from hunters. Yeah. I have a, we have about Kind of the pretty same similar. way. So we have pretty similar stances, but you might be a little wider or you might even be a, something like a hybrid stance, um, which I know a couple people that do that. Yeah. So let's go check out your stance. And you want to be directly stacked over. About how far do you like to set up from the bar? I like to set up as close to the bar as I possibly can. Yeah. Without kicking it forward. Yes, <laughs> so without sure. kicking it forward. Okay. Also, next uh, with stance is going to be foot position. Some people try to go too narrow and that places too much stress on the quad. By uh, turning your toes outward, you get more glute and hammy engagement as well. So you wanna have, it allows you to open your hips up as well so they won't be in the way. And that's something you can really play with, like what fits you best. Mm -hmm. um, it's also like a balance thing. Mm -hmm. uh, correct me if I'm wrong, no, but yeah. um, uh, from what I've read, like turning the feet more out creates more of a balance issue. Uh, it depends because you want to have a good balance of uh, opening up the hips as yeah. well as creating enough lateral heel tension, but not too much to where you fall back yeah. forward. Yeah. So it's kind of like um, what I think with rooting the feet Basically, I think big toe, little mm -hmm. toe, lateral heel tension. You wanna push through the ball of your foot. A lot of people think of the deadlift as just a pull, but it's actually a push. You wanna act like there's a crack in the middle of the floor and you're trying to spread it apart and make it wide. So, right. onto grabbing the bar. Um, you're gonna wanna always grab somewhere in the knurling. Some people are a little wider. I like to go pretty close to where the knurling ends. Yeah, same uh, here. Yeah, so, also, uh, I know that's just a deadlift, but you're also using a lot of lats. So a way to use your lats uh, and also like shoulder retraction is to basically think of like a band pull apart. If I'm over in a hip hinge and someone is pulling, uh, pushing down on my hands, you're gonna wanna try to push up and that'll get your uh, rear delts firing. Yeah. So if you wanna push on to show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like pushing here. Yep and you're gonna feel your rear delts light up almost immediately. You wanna mimic that same exact feeling in the deadlift. So how you do that, I'm gonna go through my setup. You're basically going to externally rotate your shoulders. So if you're mixed grip or even actually uh, hook grip, this applies to both. So I'm gonna act like I'm basically turning my elbows to the wall behind me. So if she were to externally rotate her shoulders and I was trying to get in here to tickle her armpit, mm -hmm. I could not get in. It's locked down or it's, it's locked out. Yeah. But then the next step is you externally rotate the shoulders, but then pack the lat down into the back pocket. Basically, you're going to put in put lats to hips, yeah. if that makes sense. So the full setup would be find your stance, grab the bar, externally rotate the shoulders, pack the lats down, and I've already pulled all the slack out of the bar. 
and all you have to do is stand up at that point. So when you're talking about grabbing the bar, I know there's like three different ways generally to do it. There's the two overhand, mm -hmm. two underhand, and then split. Uh, which one have you found to be better, or which one would be, would be better under different circumstances? Uh, I think underhand would be terrible for everyone. I'm yeah. never, <laughs> I'm yeah, never I seen not, yeah. I would not do that. <laughs> um, so people, it depends on what you're comfortable with. Like, okay. there's no, all of these are like arbitrary rules, and it's 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 all dependent on the people. Yeah. So if you are, I I hate hook grip because I think it places too much stress on my quads, and also it just fucking hurts. So I stick to mixed grip because I don't have any grip yeah, issues. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. If you have grip issues, you might want to try something like hook grip because, I mean, you got to hold on to the fucking bar. Yeah. <laughs> so generally, split is what's yeah, most Yeah, I do a mixed grip as well. Yeah. I just think it feels better. Yeah, it's just comfortable. I feel like I can lock in like my mm -hmm. hammies and a lot more, and I can get that twisting to pack my lats down. There is no one right answer. You know, it's all yeah. what works best for you, what makes you more efficient as a lifter. Yes. So. It's all about, like, different anatomy. Yeah. Like, I'm going to lift different from you. My hips are built different than you. So, yeah. We also have different levels of varying mobility and things like that. Yeah. So, it's all just what's comfortable. So, I'm going to have you set up and try to. I'll, I'll walk you through it. Right. So, so, find your stance. Uh, uh. You're going to want to be a little bit closer to the bar. Yep. And I want to have you turn your toes a little bit more out. In fact, can you actually take off these shoes? Never deadlift in a cushy shoe. If you, and also if you deadlift in like something that has like a heel, you're basically just putting yourself into an unnecessary deficit and that's not what you want at all. Yeah. You want a solid yeah. base, like as close so, to the ground as possible. So I would go a little bit more out, a little bit more out on that one, and then go down to the bar. And then basically, instead of uh, squatting down, which you're not doing yet, with the sumo deadlift, you want to keep your hips as high as possible. It's not a squat. So instead of like squatting down, you basically want to scoop your hips into the bar and make your T-spine kind of like a lever. So grab the bar and then you're going to want to externally rotate the shoulder, pack the lats down and basically scoop your hips in, look up straight in front of you and pull. Good. Yes. <laughs> keep That's the good. bar super so close the, to you. Yeah, keep the bar close to you. Don't let it go out. A little bit more close and look ahead always. Yeah, keep your head forward. A little bit better. You basically want to kind of use your quads to kind of glide it up your body a little bit. There you go. Better. Good. Yeah. That was really good. Yeah, that wasn't bad for your first time. <laughs> How'd it feel? Starting off strong. Felt pretty yeah. good. Good. Yeah. yeah. And like, it took me, I mean, I'm still refining my tech, my sumo technique yeah. and I've been doing it for like three and a half years now. Like my pull changes constantly depending on how like how my leverage has changed because like right now I'm walking around 180 when I used to walk around at like 160. So those are always like your, your lifting is always going to be changing, varying on like your body weight, your yeah. muscle mass, things like that. One of my favorite ways to like learn kind of activations to feel different muscles in your body is by doing a lot of pre-exhaustion work. So maybe before he jumps to a bar, um, not including like his regular warm up set he does like doing his glutes, rolling out and things like that. Maybe you can start by doing like a straight arm lat pull down. You can maybe start by doing some dumbbell RDLs just to kind of get your hands Activate and your glutes. Muscles, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then there's so many different variations that you can do. One of my favorites is a forward pulling band uh, when you deadlift. So you can either have someone, it'll basically be set up right in the middle of the bar and you can either have someone pulling on it or have it set up with like a dumbbell or something or even a rig. And you're basically wanna have it have enough tension to where it's pulling the bar forward so that you're forced to lock your lats in and keep the bar really close to you, which I think would work for you. Yeah. Because uh, you have a tendency to let it kind of drift a little bit forward. If you let the bar drift forward when you're doing sumo, you ba your back has to be strong as fuck in order to yeah. recover that. Like just to clear that. forward as in farther for me like this. Yes. So basically yeah, if you were keep... here, the band is going to be pushing it this way. So you are forced to lock in. And deadlift. You have to work hard to keep that position. Mm -hmm. Basically in the middle. And so I, you can have someone pulling the band, like I'm having Hunter do, mm -hmm. or let's say I had like a, a rig in front of me or a really heavy dumbbell to keep it in place. Just I would use that if here. you don't have a training partner. Yeah, just attach it to something. And you're basically gonna, gonna wanna set up on the bar and she doesn't have any tension in it yet. And once I'm starting to set up, she's gonna start pulling on the bar. So I have to keep my lats really engaged or else if I don't, I'm gonna bend over or it's gonna come out too far. Yeah. So pull on it really hard. Good. 
I'm basically forced to keep it close to me. So I'm gonna have you try to see if that works. Don't let, and you keep it really close, but once you start to get up here, you let it drift forward. I want it basically touching your quads the whole way up. Better. Yeah. Now I want you to fix your eyes. Always look mm -hmm. forward. Like find something up there mm -hmm. and don't take your eyes off of it. Good. Better. That looks so much better. Yeah. Good. Give me one more. Good job, that one. Nice. Yes. And you felt your lats right here a, w a lot more. Yeah, for sure. So there's like a t um, different multitude of things that you can use for uh, lat engagement in the deadlift. Like, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> doing a bunch of variations. Um, I really like paused work, mm -hmm. tempo work, um, paused work on the eccentric and concentric. Yeah. You can also, uh, Boris pulls. There's so many different things that you can use in order to make your pull more efficient. I'm a big fan of block pulls too. I hate block pulls. I love block pulls. Yeah. <laughs> well, because it, it, this is like, I usually start them around, around yeah. the knee, and that's my weakest point. High block pulls are very, very hard because, like, as soon as you have to lock it out, like, as soon as yeah, you Yeah, there's the no block. momentum. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, they fucking suck. Yeah. Um, I also really like um, supplementing conventional for sumo. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I, feel, I did like an eight week block one time, and then I, my sumo pull went up by like 30 pounds yeah. in like eight weeks. But I mean, I don't, I, I don't promise that for everyone, <laughs> but, but it worked for me. Um, I also really like doing SSB because I feel like that yeah. transfers over really well to sumo. Uh, you can do that with uh, my favorite variation to do after sumos is like something like a SSB pin squat, dead mm -hmm. stop at, mm -hmm. at parallel. Or like, yeah, I wouldn't really program those <laughs> for more than five reps at a time just because I feel like the, the key factor to that is explosiveness. So mm -hmm. yeah. definitely helped a lot. Um, I've heard the explanation of scooping your hips into mm -hmm. the bar before, and I can say that definitely helps. Rather than squatting down. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was definitely very helpful. Thank you guys for coming yeah. and help yeah. me uh, help me get started doing the deadlift. Yeah. If anyone wants me to enter the realm of squats, <laughs> <laughs> which is the one we haven't done yet, because I did benches with Mark, awesome. deadlifts with you. Sure to hit a like on this video, and maybe we'll bring in someone to help me with some squats. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. Catch you guys later.